Welcome to the 11th lecture in the 2011-2012 English Lecture Series. It's a great pleasure and an honor to introduce today's speaker. It is Mr. Yukio Ozaki. He's a professor of fine arts at Chaminade University of Honolulu, and he is a ceramicist, okay? A potter. A, a potter, ceramics master, okay? And he will be speaking about his life, the path, events, his faith, and purpose and it should be a very interesting, very enjoyable lecture. Please welcome Mr. Yukio Ozaki. First of all, I really thank you for being here uh, after you know, reading the name Yukio Ozaki. And why are we listening to this guy? And then some of you might have even checked with the uh, Google, and it said nothing comes out. You know, so I thought, God, is it worth listening? Hope it doesn't make you too sleepy, but if, you, if it does, uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> Please take a good nap. At least you get some nice time. <laughs> uh, today I'll uh, casually talk about what happened. I think you might be a little bit curious why am I here today and then why am I talking about my life. And uh, first I was going to do it a little bit properly dressed, but uh, since it's a little bit hot, so forgive me, take my jacket off. And uh, as uh, Dr. Clanky uh, introduced me, I teach, and I hate that word because I don't teach anything. And if I do teach anything, it's not that important. You know, my students uh, decide to learn. And so sometimes I'm controversial because I don't particularly uh, set details of what I do in the semester of class. And uh, depending on the students, I, uh, I have to change a lot in the way. And so I don't like the word. I'm an educator at a small Catholic school called Chaminade University. It's actually uh, in easier pronunciation, immediate uh, reading by words, is Chaminade uh, University. And a French uh, priest at the time of uh, French Revolution uh, set up there or try to uh, help uh, lay people, lay meaning uh, non-religious uh, people uh, try to get back into faith. But I don't want to go into the details too. Anyway, that's the name. And uh, I thought it was quite out of place at the beginning uh, when I, uh, in my changes of life, went there. And very, very fortunately, I was hired and at the time, I really didn't see the reason, but I'll touch on that later. Uh, I think it might be more interesting how I went through uh, my life. And first of all, uh, I noticed several people are native uh, English speakers. And so uh, for you, it may not be as interesting, but for those who are Japanese and then uh, try to uh, study or try to uh, get the ability to deal with uh, English, as your language in operation, I guess, and uh, applied English, I guess, uh, it may be interesting how it happens to you. And it happened the same way I did the uh, uh, flower arrangement when I was in high school. And uh, I really got so interested when I was junior high school, I saw a, a flower arrangement uh, exhibition. Those days we used to call Zenge uh, avant-garde flower arrangement or avant-garde art. Today, you really never hear avant-garde because nothing is avant-garde anymore. You know, somebody like Lady Gaga comes in, and you know, avant-garde is all gone. You know, so uh, it really doesn't matter. But at the time, it was quite a uh, breakthrough, and I was shocked. It was uh, in old days, Toyoko department store, today's Tokyo uh, station building part. And it really uh, shocked me. That's what management, and I wanted to do that. So in high school I went and found out it is all girls. So only, you know, myself in it. And, uh, and it, I enjoyed it and, uh, because uh, my teacher got so interested. Uh, I got deeper and deeper into it. As a result, she told me I have to study English conversation so that the, the school, Ohara school, will send me outside and that will be quite an honor and this and that. So, uh, that's what I did uh, in college uh, right away. But 
uh, it continued about five years with the O'Hara School and uh, because my teacher was so passionate about uh, I, because I was into it and I, uh, I really was pushed a bit too far for a very selfish, uh, impatient young kid. And I started seeing a lot of Japanese those days. For you, it would be like 45 years ago or more, 46, 7 years ago, uh, Japanese still traditional uh, art uh, were quite, quite tight in their own way. And I just thought, I can't, I can't make a living teaching that. So I ended up quitting. And I disappointed her a lot. But, uh, and also, I tried to continue about three years on my own, but uh, uh, it didn't work out too well. So in many ways, I dropped it out completely. Uh, but when you commit yourself that long, you never drop out. Yeah? It stays with you. And it came back, so I'll mention that later. Anyhow, I went to college and I uh, went to Gakushin University and I don't come from that kind of family. <laughs> Scraping the bottom of my you know, family's uh, uh, funding uh, went there uh, the, due to the fact that I was quite poor in mathematics and I had to choose uh, what you call Bunkake, culture uh, direction and then, so that's what I did. And uh, of all places I went to English language uh, English literature course. Uh, again, uh, that year, 300 uh, entrants, uh, three, three boys. And so that was quite a bit of experience also. And uh, it's a little bit difficult to function uh, all the time. So I got myself involved in just to concentrate more English language speaking, English speaking society, we call it ES. Yes, isn't that the popular way it's still called, instead of English club? And that's what I did. And I got involved in drama uh, circle. And uh, I didn't realize I was quite interested in theater. And uh, so as a result, I ended up wanting to be an actor. <laughs> as I thought, I was so selfish and, you know, very, uh, how do you call it? just certain, find certain things that immediately want to get into that type of person. And yet, each time I really, I really committed. And uh, today, I look at it that way, but everything I got involved that way, is not particularly your decision. Uh, I'm sure some of you may hate to hear this word, but uh, I believe in God a lot. I have no religion, but I believe in God. Without God's uh, somehow uh, influence on me, I don't think I have made it this far at all. And I'm so thankful because when I was in Japan, and that's up until 42 years ago, I didn't give a good God back. I'm sorry <laughs> to say. But uh, uh, I was so immature, and uh, I'm so thankful today. But anyhow, uh, one of the things that happened was uh, in the English speaking club or society, whenever I came by, uh, my club friends look at me, they all disappeared because they knew I was going to start speaking in English because that's what the purpose of the club was. And I was charged with, you know, I gotta learn, I gotta. And so they just didn't want it. Was, it, was, it was a social club for them. For me, it was a means of life, you know, and so preparing for it. And I ended up, I had to get outside of the school, and opportunity presented itself that some of you might heard of an organization or group organization called Model Production, MP, in Tokyo. There are about 35 universities, uh, English-speaking club, get together and have this uh, uh, group every year. Uh, originally set up by a uh, Fulbright scholar uh, who was a professional uh, actor, stage manager from Broadway. And uh, he gave such influence, and in fact, personally, he gave me such influence that he was my American father for a long time. But anyhow, uh, this man, 
uh, found out he came over to teach American Broadway theater uh, to Japanese theatrical group, but uh, Japanese theatrical groups are very traditional, and you know one of the uh, leaders go to U.S. or England and learn certain things about Western theater. They become authority, and yet their training is so traditional. So Mr. Bayer would uh, teach certain things, and then and then uh, next day uh, he comes back and everybody is going such overacting, and you know he realizes he cannot change. So he didn't want to waste time, so he decided to ask the American Cultural Center to uh, teach uh, students through the English learning, uh, uh, through the uh, drama method, how to uh, uh, learn live situation English. And I'm sure many of you who are interested in English uh, language learning, uh, you want to learn something live. Uh, how do you actually use? And that was a uh, brilliant method. Today, it's not that, it's not that com I mean, uncommon. You know, many things are taught through English. Uh, uh, taking photography through English, this is a new method. Not new, it's been going on everywhere. Every land. We teach our babies through live language lesson using what? You know, everything is live and that's how it ought to be done. Anyhow, it was a great success and I am one of the examples. And uh, it's very interesting how things happen. During those days, I really didn't realize until today, or until let's say about 20 years ago, uh, what was happening at the beginning of those. Uh, we tend to ignore, or we tend to not pay attention to using words, coincidence. Yeah, we say, oh, that was a such coincidence. There is nothing coincidence. It is all meant to happen for you to notice and I think realize, oh my God, that was the reason I am like this today. And so don't miss anything. Don't miss anything. And uh, in tea ceremony, there is an expression, ikki. One meeting is one, only one experience. Ichigo Ichigo. Ichigo, so, so. Yes, so it's so important that uh, we tend to, you know, at school you see your friends every day, and so you tend to ignore, but that meeting of that day, that moment, doesn't happen again. And it's an extreme value. We don't know it until much later. And the reason I got this uh, very particular help from Mr. Bayer, who became the uh, most vital uh, influence in my uh, American life, one of the theatrical students' contest, I was uh, there and then watched the whole thing, and uh, our club uh, leader said, oh, today, tonight we go to Mr. Bayer's house, and uh, so uh, we're going to divide it into taxis and then go to his house. And so when the taxi came, I jumped into this one, and Mr. Vaya came in, and nobody has come in. Because they don't want to speak in English. It's a social club, remember? So they just, oh, if he was there, they have to speak in English. So they said, and I thought, oh my God, I'm the only one. And I just smiled nicely, and not to be rude. And then Mr. Vaya said, Daikanyama. Daikanyama, that's where I lived. And so, and he started talking to me, and I just smiled, and, and it was about five minutes about from my house, and that ended up, I started helping him out in uh, getting uh, meals ready for many students to come, uh, arrange flowers, whatever. And at that time, jumping into that taxi changed my life.